Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. I am picking up right where I left off on We the Revolution, which is a game that just came out this week. If you want to see episode one, you can click on the link in the description below. That'll take you back to it. I'm not going to talk about much about what has happened thus far. You can watch the first episode to see that. This is my first look at the game, my first time playing through it, and we are in Act 1, Day 4. Things are unraveling, un unraveling quickly for King Louis and for all associated with him. So, tragically, we are losing control of the streets. People feel betrayed by the king, and some be believe him to be a spy trying to elude justice. The king has fled at this point from Paris, and we're trying to track him down. Special means are recommended when suppressing unrest. We only need an opinion from the judges to make sure we are working legally. In other words, you need our blessing to shoot at protesters. All right. It pains us to see unrest growing in the streets of Paris. Commander-in-Chief Burrell has informed us that the Guard is no longer able to keep control of the situation through peaceful means. It's recommended that he be allowed to use more immediate methods to protect the innocent civilians, but we would like to know the tribunal's opinion on the matter. Oh, uh, boy. I feel like if I do this, it's going to really backfire on me, but we're going to go ahead and go along with it for now and see what happens. I just feel like this is really, really going to be bad. I guess i got to put my seal on it, too. Oh, that's going to backfire big time. The mob wanted to act as both judge and jury again and hang people from the street lamps. Poor Richard, or Pauchard, was almost hanged. The beloved tutor of your Frederick, you had to dismiss him after the incident with the oath of the clergy, did you not? Yep. Oh, there's my wife and son again. What are you doing? The trial's about to begin. Oh, they're coming to appeal to me. He's accused of counter-revolutionary activities. Mm, boy. Think about the family for once at least. So now I got the family kind of tugging on me here. And I'm sure this is who I'm facing now. Let's take a look and see. Yep, that's him. State your personal information or there will be consequences. So everybody feels differently about this one, it appears. Spying for the counter-revolutionaries and criticizing the existing order. Do you admit these crimes? I'm innocent. The accusation is exaggerated and comes from the ill will of the accusers. Oh boy. So he's a priest. Yeah, boy. I don't know. Okay, let's take a look. So he's 26 year old vicar and tutor, son of a cobbler. He believes in enlightenment ideals. After refusing to adhere or adjure the civil constitution of the clergy, he was removed from his parish, prohibited from carrying out his duties, and sentenced to banishment. Despite this, he stayed in Paris and continued his work as a tutor which he started before 1789. So somebody recognized him because he was supposed to be banished and he hadn't left. Correspondence with Archbishop Jean Arsène de Bretuil was found in a room Pochard had been renting from Marie Guimet. In it, clergymen asked for information about the unrest and supporters of the monarchy in hiding. Riches were also found a golden, golden chalice and a reclary. A reliquary. Okay, so let's talk about this letter from the Archbishop. That's some evidence. So let's talk about that a little bit. You received instructions from the Archbishop. Pope's dog! Behead the traitor. Oh boy. It's a simple letter, not instructions. It's not from the Archbishop, but from my parish priest in Compon. Where is he? Hmm. All right, so the common folk want this guy beheaded. The revolutionaries want him in prison. And my family wants him acquitted. Oh, boy. All right.
Seems like a simple enough letter. I don't know. Let's talk about banishment. Actually, you know what? I want to talk about these church riches for a while and why he had these things. So why did he have the stuff? Private religious practice. You are prohibited from administering the sacraments. It's not a sacrament, merely prayer. Declaration of the rights of man and of the citizens allow me to pray. You should be familiar with the document. So far, not seeing a lot that's really condemning him. I don't know. Let's see what else there is here. He was banished. So let's talk about that. The course of events. Why did you stay in France despite being banished? Had to take care of my sick mother without me. She surely would have died. Why didn't you take her with you? I was in no position to afford that. Okay. I do not correspond with emigres. Okay. We have evidence. Okay, man, everybody wants this guy to die. And it looks like it's getting even worse. The jury's opinion is definitely the death penalty. That is not good. I feel like that is not the way to go here. My family already hates me. All right, spreading propaganda. Let's talk about that. Okay, no. He's accused of espionage. Hughes travels extensively around the Paris department. To what end? I teach wherever I can find students. He travels around France to spy on people. The only money I see comes from my students' caregivers. It's not at all immodest. Those were liturgical things. They weren't riches. Uh, man. Okay, it actually went down a little bit, the jury's opinion on death penalty. But, uh, oh boy. Still, I'm, I'm finding a reason, to, I'm trying to find a reason to uh, let this guy go, but I don't know if there's going to be one. My duty is to help others. If I'm not able to help as a priest, I want to at least share some of my knowledge. Your knowledge is Catholic propaganda. I prefer the term Catholic values. Okay, went down a little bit again. Hmm. Man, this is going to be a tough one. What else do we have? Let's ask him about his tutoring. Two francs a week, but most people give me food instead. Bread, butter, or sometimes not. I didn't know any people actually had that stuff at this point. Poor people have to take food from their children to give it to you. Of course it bothers me, but I too have to eat. Uh, where did the gold come from? If it's not from your fellow conspirators abroad. Yeah. There is no easy answer on this one. I'm not liking this at all. And I'm already kind of in badly with a lot of people here. We've only got a couple questions left to ask on this one. Let's talk about his spreading of propaganda. Caregivers and orphanages only pay for reading and writing lessons. So why did the accused teach the children that God's law stands above that of the Republic? You spread superstition and counter-revolutionary propaganda. Children I teach are unable to understand such complicated matters. I said God's law stood above my banishment. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, that... Brought, brought them back from death penalty a little bit. All right, what do we got left here? All questions unlocked. Okay. Summon the witness. Marie Guimet. Okay. This one's getting complicated. Was the witness aware she was un renting a room to an unsworn Catholic priest? I didn't know he was a priest. He never wore cassocks, so how was I supposed to know? He wanted a room. I gave him a room. He dressed normally. Maybe he did. I don't know. Did he ever criticize the revolution? 
Once he said that instead of beheading, they could do something about economy and teaching, that the children were hungry and, well, can't read or write. Now that I think about it, maybe he did. He complained that the law didn't work, that a smart person would send all the kids to school by force if need be. Hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with what he said. All right, the jury wants to go with prison. I'm inclined to go that way, too. I feel like that's probably the way to go here. All right. Was his act counter-revolutionary revolutionary in nature? I would say no. Well, no, his words were, but what valuables were seized from the defendant? Where were the traders whom the defendant was corresponding with located? S Switzerland, how much did the defendant earn for his espionage? Two francs per week. Okay, so I feel like... I feel like we're probably leaning toward prison here. Yikes. That's going to make me not good with everybody. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to go prison. Which my family's going to hate. But honestly, I just... Ugh, this sucks. <laughs> There's no good decisions in any of this stuff. I just went with the jury on that one. He saved that priest. He showed mercy to an enemy of the revolution. He ought to have been killed. I have nothing else to say. Oh, the common folk are not happy with me. The revolutionaries are okay with me. Yeah, I guess technically it was counter-revolutionary. That's one I wasn't sure about. All right. Common folk, definitely not happy with me. Let's look at the hierarchy for a minute. Still learning my way around all this stuff. Man, the common folk, I'm going to have to do something to please the common folk pretty soon or I'm going to find myself at the guillotine myself. Yikes. Yeah, this is kind of the world that we live in in the French Revolution right now. Ooh. One fool spewed out one word too many. The other fired a musket. They fought for freedom. Each for their own. That man. Hard to forget. He asked me if I'd seen his wife. He found his son. The freedom we borrowed from the wealthy and the noble. We believed it was worth the price. He was judged by people long devoid of their freedom. The only things they knew were dust and sweat and anger. I'll say this, they do a good job of kind of putting you in in the story uh you know you definitely feel like you're really a part of i mean it was just the, the french revolution it was just madness it was absolute madness and it's not the only time in history that people have gone mad like that because of fervor over something but uh it was bad we made a nice profit there was a chance of prosperity why would a renard family want to take over your shop grandpapa
Grow up, boy. I only saw the truth when they attempted to sentence my son, your uncle, to death. It suddenly dawned on me that the only things that mattered were the power I never had and the connections I never cared for. You wanted to be righteous while the injustice spread like a plague. You should not be sorry for that. But I'd rather your brother had lived so that I still had two sons. You have a brother, Daddy? Where is he? He died a long time ago before you were born. Why did he die? I guess we don't want to talk about it. Your uncle went to war and died in battle. Your generation will soon realize the extent of the damage we inflicted upon the world. Yep. Going to go down with my family after sentencing him to prison. I better do something to uh, make my family happy here. Oh, I cannot change this action. Yeah, you signed off on the use of deadly force against protesters. Your family is not all keen on talking to you tonight. Fair enough. Man, they are really unhappy with me. Jeez, absolutely brutal. Act 1, Liberté Day 5. Man, this is going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Oh, this guy again. Yeah, I got a bad relationship with my family, all right. All right, well, it seems like I may be headed toward my first death sentence. Uh, the people that I'm in the worst with right now are my family and the common folk, and they all want the death penalty for this next case. So let's take a look. Matthew Burrell, the former commander-in-chief of the National Guard. This is the guy that I just met with. He stands accused of causing the death of 34 people who took part in a demonstration. So the guy I just gave permission to looks like he uh, fired on a bunch of protesters. So uh, they quickly resorted to name-calling and public threats. Soon after, a National Guard detachment led by the defendant arrived on the scene. According to the eyewitness of testimony of Blaise Fawcett, um, Commander-in-Chief Matthew Burrell stood himself between the two groups alone and attempted to talk sense into them. He was quickly shouted down by the protesters. A few of them vocally accused the Commander-in-Chief of violating their freedom of speech. Okay, well, it sounds to me like he tried to reason with f folks. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's talk to him. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into the testimony. We've got a lot of choices to make now on this one. So let's talk about the protesters. Uh, let's talk about the course. Oh, darn it. All right, we'll talk about... Boy. All right, we'll talk about the order to load muskets. I guess that's got to be part of the course of events, correct? Yep, okay. Does the accused not think that the order to load muskets may have been issued too early? Why? Because it aggravated the crowd. The people of Paris have an ugly history of impaling heads on pikes. I had a sizable mob before me that was quite obviously ready to attack us at any moment. No, that order was not issued too early. More than that, we should have started shooting as soon as we arrived instead of wasting our time trying to calm them down. So you believe in brute force rather than diplomacy. If diplomacy had any chance of success in this situation, deputies of the convention would have been sent instead of the guard. Yet no one, not one of them, decided to show up. I wonder why. All right. What else we got here? Commander-in-Chief's dismissal causing death. Crowd's fervor. His recklessness. Let's talk about this for exa example here. Um, let's see. The accusation about his recklessness. All right. Did you see yourself as reckless, Commander? No, I was calm most of the time. It comes with age and experience. Yet you stood between two hostile groups without any guards. That indicates something quite different. That is called bravery. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I think that seems to indicate he was trying to calm the whole thing down. 
Interesting. Okay. I have a feeling we're sentencing him to death no matter what I do here. What's the tribunal's opinion? No. Let's see what the questions are that I need to answer. Did the defendant confess to the crime? I mean, technically he did give the order. He's not disputing that. Let's talk about his resignation, I guess. His dismissal. Yeah, let's talk about that. We're not address all of them, but the one that wounded me was the most was my supposed incompetence. You caused the death of. Yeah, fair point. Oh. Yeah, the jury's all about the death penalty on this guy, so I think that's the way we're going no matter what. Is he a monarchist? Yeah, I think he is. I don't think it's going to matter what I say here in this case. What else can we ask? All right, we're going to talk to another witness. You confirm being a witness of the events that were cause of our gathering. Yes. He stood between the people and started yelling at them. If someone came up to him, he pushed them away and made threats, shaking his fist, but I think he meant well. What did the accused do when the first bodies fell? He, oh, he wasn't very nice, not nice at all. He told his people to leave and then spat in the direction of the crowd and the bodies there. Interesting. Yeah, that didn't help him at all. Okay, I think we're ready to uh, go ahead and condemn this guy. I don't think it's going to much matter what else happens here. So let's go ahead and just be done with it. Ooh. Sorry, dude. For the first time, I'm sending someone to the guillotine. I've got to get in good with the common folks and with my family. Guess it doesn't much matter what the right thing to do is. No, I was terrible with that, though. <laughs> I mean, he confessed. He admitted. I, I guess it doesn't. I guess it matters what the crime is. All right, I'm still learning all this. Careless approach to my duties. Yeah. Okay, I get it. So apparently it matters that I am a little more thorough. I just thought it mattered what the outcome is. You can see now that the thoroughness with which you do the kind of do your job matters as well. So we've got to be really careful with the whole process, I suppose. Make sure I answer the right questions. Here we go. Hmm. Interesting. For attempting persuasion, you may explore different approaches to all the topics of the conversation. After employing every kind of emotion, you will receive an evaluation of your choices. Okay. 
Interesting. Prepare your strategy. Humility, humility, manipulation. All right, now what? Commence persuasion. This is not going so well. Okay, that worked a little bit. Yeah. Your scapegoat will die so that you can walk free. I wonder if your conscience will let you sleep at night. Yeah, not so much. Yikes. Oh wait, I gotta do it? Ah. Oh. There can be no more demeaning experience for the revolutionary Paris than the escape of citizen Capet, uh, the, the king. He escaped, slipped right through from their hands. And the revolution now seems feeble and weak. The people resemble a child that could easily be duped by anyone. However, the Republic quickly composed itself thanks to a postmaster and his people who were able to catch the fugitives escaping to Montmédé. Ordinary citizens led to the fall of the monarch. You will have a chance to serve the Republic as well, for Citizen Capet will face the tribunal tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I have to be the guy who decides what happens with the king? Oh my gosh. Leave him alone until the trial. Good night. That's going to be interesting. I get to decide the fate of Louis the Sixteenth After we meet with the family, who I slightly made happy by executing that guy. All right. How about... Playtime with the children. Yes. So back in good with the kids, at least for now. Nice. All right, day six. I guess we are on to the trial of the king at this point. There he is. I'm going to wrap it up right there. I know that was a short episode, but I feel like the trial and everything that happens with Louis should probably be an episode in and of itself. So I know a lot a lot of not, not a lot is happening so far, but this is kind of a story-driven game, so it's going to be a little slower pace and a little more kind of low-key than some of the other games that I play. But let me know your thoughts. I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit better of a sense of how the game operates. Certainly, I've made my blunders along the way. Um, but the first time you play through anything, you learn those things. So I'm starting to get a little bit more of a sense of how this is all going to go down. So with that said, please let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Please hit that thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll be back maybe in another three or four days with the next episode. Thanks for watching.